Good, Good evening. evening and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing, Nick? I'm very well, Lolly. How are you? I'm not so bad. You're I'm looking not so very bad. well. I was looking very um, delightful as usual. Well, thanks. Uh, do you know what? We had to because the uh, makeup ladies are in today. Indeed. So a little bit, try to do a bit extra today. You know what I mean? I want to be I like the... to a, I try to put a bit of blush on my cheeks, Lolly, but <laughs> as you can see, I'm still shining a bit. I need a, I need a powder. <laughs> I know what that's but like. Anyway, um, it's it. I'm looking forward to today's show. Yeah. It's about everything beauty and makeup. Yes. A bit of a touchy subject sometimes, though. It, it is a bit because, you know, yeah. um, usually you usually ask people, why, why do they wear makeup? Is it for themselves to make themselves feel better? Or is it for the look to make uh -huh. themselves more attractive? to the opposite sex it's a it's a very interesting question it is good evening goes out to uh, norma um and those who are checked in um yeah. and i thought i just missed a comment there Borla chick there she says she's bang on time good evening Indeed. and welcome so yes today as you've guessed it ladies and gents good we evening all saint about, as well there we go good evening we yeah. are talking about uh the evolution of makeup mm. so uh we're going back into uh, the old you know, the old, well, you won't know much about it, Nick, the old foundation with the, the white container with the gold, uh, the gold, um, with the, like palm trees on it. It will come to me, the name okay. of it, because I remembered it <laughs> I know a little bit about Revlon. A bit of Revlon? Yeah, Revlon. Okay, okay. <laughs> We're going to delve a little bit deeper into that. Okay. <laughs> so okay. this so evening, joining us on our panellists, uh, we mm -hmm. have... Um, uh, Sherry Dixon, Sherry Ann Dixon, a multi-award winning transformational coach and journalist, a public speaker, lecturer, and a previous beauty editor for Pride magazine. That was a mouthful. Indeed it was. Indeed that was, it was. So she'll be joining us. Uh, we've also got uh, Deacon uh, Nadolomingo uh, from mm -hmm. House of uh, Baby D. Uh, she's also a makeup artist. She does fashion, specialist in hair, uh, colouring, and also a seamstress. It seems like multi uh, creative talents here today indeed indeed we also have um cheryl jumbo who is a cosmetic scientist she's a founder of black beauty and fashion awards the bbfa um she's also a aware of the difference in differences in hair texture and skin skin color and the lack of variety in beauty products available to her so she she's worked for major companies as well so i think we could get a little insight from cheryl as well yep Good stuff, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you want to introduce the next one or shall the I next, do The next one is um, Sophie Bissett. She's a pro makeup artist, beauty educator um, and influencer, I would say. She's <laughs> worked over 30 years with culture makeup brands and um, she has used social media, Instagram and such platforms to uh, further her, her um, craft. Mm -hmm. Well done to Sophie. And yeah. last but not least, we have C. Marie. Uh, she's a newbie to the industry and she has uh, gone and uh, into the hair and uh, makeup world. Uh, so we'll see about what her experience is. Um, and because uh, her, her mum is a well-renowned hairdresser in Birmingham from okay. back in the day. So I'm sure she'll have lots of uh, different things uh, to talk about as well. Yeah. And I'm sure, I'm sure, obviously, Lolly, being a, a woman of, of the world and stuff, you can add a few tips of your own. For our, One or our... two, maybe. Yes, what's that? One or two. One or two. I'm sure you've learned <laughs> a few tricks of the trade over the years, right? That you share yeah. amongst your friends. <laughs> yes, definitely. Looking, looking forward to that. Okay, so without further ado, can we get our first guest on? Yes, let's do that. Sherry Ann Dixon, are you there? There she is. Hello, Sherry. Hi, how are you doing? We Not are so very bad. well, Sherry. Sherry, uh, before we before we begin, um, I I want to see if I can get this image up on here. If we, we've got an image, I just wanted to show this image on screen. If we can get the image up on screen, okay. Now, Sherry, look at this. These are two very contrasting images, very stark. This is what makeup can do, right? I'm not sure if it's just makeup, it's airbrushing. You think it, oh, there's airbrushing in there as well. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, not, it's not completely what we see. There. Yeah, probably some makeup was put on and then because to, you would have to put on a lot of makeup, uh -huh. uh, foundation, foundation, yeah. concealer. 
to conceal the uh, marks. That person probably has a vitiligo or she could have lupus where right. that gives you those demarcations on the skin. But I think it's airbrushed because it's too perfect around the uh, the chin, the, you know, the, oh, the eyes. Under the eyes. I know I you get to know these things. Oh, okay. <laughs> that looks natural as her is the forehead. Okay. Okay, okay. So, 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 Sherry, tell us, tell us a little bit about um, you and your experience in the beauty and makeup industry. Look, I started off as it was just my hobby. Uh, it was something that I loved doing, and I was doing it on the side. You know, it was like my side job. And mm -hmm. um, everybody sort of know that. Uh, everybody came to me when when they wanted to be made up, and I, I was leaving a specific job and my boss said what do you want to do and I said I want to do beauty and um, they paid for me to go off that was my leaving gift they paid for me to go off and do beauty passed with honors and the rest is history um, you know I made up lots of inter you know Luther Vandross, Barry White, Faith Evans, wow. Wow. Uh, Nelson Mandela I was called in to do him so I was one of the celebrity makeup artists who were quite popular at the time. Um, you know, there was Alison Edwards, who was fantastic. And we would go in for jobs, you know, they always came to two or three of the same people, but we, we, we wouldn't block another person. We had yeah. character then, and, and we wouldn't just sort of say, no, use me instead. We just had integrity. Um, and at that time, there was only two or three of us that were... Yeah, very popular, very, very popular. Okay. So, Sherry, what, did you find back then it was hard to get the right makeup in terms of shades and that dealing with people? Yes, because there wasn't, um, there was only fashion fair and then Iman came on, came in, and so everybody went for Iman because it wasn't as red as fashion fair. But I, gave, I think we should give props to fashion fair although they're not, I don't know if they're around anymore, but give props to them because they were the first to be in any departmental store in, 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 in our history. All black girls in departmental stores selling to black women and was beating Chanel and Essie Lord and all those people, they were making more money than them. Oh, wow. So I just told you some statistics. Wow. <laughs> so, so, Sherry, um in terms of if in terms of like the overall i mean obviously you've been in the industry um a long time and you've had the um you've had the pleasure of working with a lot of top makeup artists like yourself um what have you noticed the current trends are as as opposed to when you first started do you do you see a stark difference yes there is nick a good question um when i started we were told we, people wanted us to make them up, but you had to, to blend so much that the makeup became so natural. It, nobody wanted to see foundation or, or chiseling features. Unlike today, where they're almost doing what we were taught as um, stage and film or fashion photographic, the type of makeup that the girls are wearing now, with all the blending and the contouring and the extra lashes, extra eyebrows even they can put in that is because um nothing is like we had to blend our foundations we had to make our foundations we only had six right light wow. to dark and so somebody was in the middle you blended the two to get that color i think the makeup artists of the older days actually had to work much harder than the girls that are makeup artists now we didn't have choices we, we, we had to, to work hard. If we wanted a, a purple, we'd blend a blue and a pink. We didn't have so much choice. But later on, it got a little bit better. And I think, um, I don't necessarily like the makeup that they're doing now. I think it's too, too artificial. Really? I wow. don't. I don't. I mean, but I'm, come on, I'm in my 60s. Well, but, you've, you've seen a lot, yeah. But I think that when you look at some young girls, the way that they put on makeup, it's such a stark difference to who they really are. Mm -hmm. It's I like makeup to look like like you've hardly got anything on. I just don't like um, I don't like it where they they're going out wearing what I call staging film or fashion photographic makeup. I don't think you should look like you've been chiseled. 
Yes. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, that's interesting, Sherry. Um, what, um, so now what, what brands do you use? Well, I mean, we, could, we see the likes of like Fenty now, Pat McGrath, Coloured Rain, Black Radiance, Black Opal, Kaor, as you mentioned, um, Iman, and another one that's in department stores, uh, Black Up. What do you use now? There's so many of them. I use Black Up, actually. I've got that on at the moment. That's what I have as well. <laughs> and it's because it's light and it just yeah. gives a, 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 a light coverage. And especially people like me who are living in the sunshine because I'm in the Caribbean. And so I don't like that whole heap of makeup um, because I think then it looks cake when you start sweating, mm -hmm. right? or glowing if you want to call it that <laughs> look makeup is about making faces that's the name that when i teach i still lecture in in beauty and I, my theme is making faces however they want it i can do it fenty is great i think she's got yeah. it locked down um you know obviously man and that lot are still going in america and and you know you can't when you ask what makeup do I use, I think when you, you've been into beauty, you don't stick to a brand. The brand is when you're a makeup consultant. But okay. a makeup artist will get the best red from, you know, Dior or the, um, the, the best powder from, I'm trying to think of names now. There's so many of them. But yeah. I used to use... Um, I used to use Estee Lauder because it just didn't have that, that yellow tint or red tint to it. It's mm -hmm. about teaching people how to understand how to blend what they have. Invariably, people are going to buy products, too many products. Sometimes you can blend what you have and make your own. Yeah. So, so Sherry, sorry, Sherry, Ann, so you, have you gone into consultancy now? Is that what you mostly yeah. do now? Yeah. I'm a consultant in so many areas. I, mm -hmm. I, I obviously I'm a motivational speaker now, but I yeah. could never forget what started me off. If it wasn't for makeup, I wouldn't have been able to interview half the, the celebrities that I've done, you know, yeah. Mia Long, uh, Faith Evans. So, uh, God, I can't remember some of them now. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, the, the, the ones that I want, to um, talk about is the normal everyday person that you've made up and you've done a makeup lesson for them and they have um, come back to you 10 years later and sent mm -hmm. you a picture and say remember when you made me up for this remember when I was a bride remember this and mm -hmm. for me those are the moments that I like and when I make people up or I, I do master classes I tell people what I use so they can go off and buy it Obviously, now we've got more of a marketing angle on it, and people will bring out their their own personal brands. But yes. I, I I I don't do that. I just um, buy what I like, especially when I come back to England. Well, thank you, Sherry Ann. We are right. going to um, don't go anywhere though, because we're going to bring you back a little bit later for some questions and answers. That was a uh, really good to uh, kick us off, don't you think, Nick? It's a very good introduction, really, and very yeah. um, very informative. Yeah, you know, some, some, of the, some of the uh, sorry, some of the um, the things that you got you guys were talking about, as in brands and that I've never heard of, I wouldn't have heard of, but you know, um, I know even from the chat room, people are talking about things like Fenty and yeah. the black, the black, um, the one that you were speaking black about. Oval. Can we get some of the comments actually? As we got a minute or yes, two, yes, shall we? Let's get shall some we? of the comments up, please, and then yeah. we can read back and say some good evenings. Okay, we want to say good. Want to say good evening to um, moments with Norma. He said, "I was one of the first black makeup artists in the early seventies." Mm. Okay. Um, so, good evening, going out to Sandra Knight. She said, "Some foundations can cover extremely well." Um, uh, Sandra Knight okay, again agree with Sherry Ann. Big up fashion fair. Yeah, fashion yeah. fair. Fashion fair. That was Fenty pink, forever. I think that was pink uh, packaging. Remember? Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, also, big up to Shah. Said um, we had an. So we had another one. Um, can't remember the name just now, but fashion fair came before fashion fair came to England. I think it's gone through so many different. Um, it's different generations, isn't it? Yeah, we saw a to Dawn Sylvester as well. She's just looked on as well. Big up, Dawn. Um, good after, good evening going out to you. Yeah. Also, obviously, ball head chick or St. Nash. Big up yourself, ladies. Thank you very much for joining in the conversation. Please do put your comments and your questions in the chat room and we'll try to get through them as we go along. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. Oh. Should we have our second guest? Yes, Lolly. Let's do that. Dika. 
she'll be joining us now. Good evening. Look at look at this picture. Oh, what a beautiful picture. <laughs> Good evening, Dika. Uh, we've got a sound. Let's let's get Dika. Let's off get the sound for Dika. One second, she'll come back. There we go. Let's no, he's see. Still on mute at the moment. Can we get Deke off mute, please? Um, yes. Our technician. We said, uh, Deke, are you on mute on your end? There we go. No, it's not on her end. Yeah, she's she's she unmute yourself. On mute there. there we go. She's there. No, no. Okay. No, we can't hear you, Deke. Okay, yeah. right. so, so we'll, 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 we'll try and get we'll Dika. We'll try and get yeah. Dika. Um, we will in a in a sec. So just to give you a little bit of a background about Dika, she um, works for the House of Baby D. Um, she also she's a specialist in hair coloring, and she's also a seamstress. So she's like a a jack of all trades, not yeah. just makeup and that. So um, I, I hope that we will be able to get get her on and be able to hear what she's got to say lolly because yeah uh, i'm sure she has a lot to share let's <laughs> okay so should we should we should we bring in our next guest then yes i think maybe we bring this? in cheryl cheryl cheryl, yeah, cheryl. Rambo. yeah cheryl cheryl could you unmute yourself please thank you yeah. hello hey. good evening <laughs> Good evening, Cheryl. How, Good evening are you? Cheryl. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? What? You just muted yourself. Oh, no, you? just muted yourself. Oh, no, no. Yes. Oh, no, that's it. Yes, we're very well, thanks. We're very well, thanks. Well, thanks. Um, it's, we've um, just obviously we've been just speaking to Sherry Ann and, and um, you know, getting a nice introduction into makeup. So tell us a little bit about um, about your your business and, uh, and how you got into the, the um, makeup and beauty business show yes. yeah. okay um so um so i'm a cosmetic scientist as you mentioned earlier and for those of you who don't know what that is it's basically a scientist that works in a laboratory formulating personal care products from your makeup to your aftershave to shampoos to body creams, toothpaste, you name it. Anything that makes you look or smell better um, is what I studied and have made over the years for various different companies. Um, one of my last, um, I think, paid roles was with Barry M Cosmetics. Um, they're known for their nail varnishes or lip gloss and their sort of dazzle dust pots of uh, eyeshadows. Um, I've been in the industry for about 17 plus years. Um, before I entered the industry, I was actually work or studying to become a sound engineer. And I met this amazing American woman who worked for Fashion Fair whilst on a shopping trip looking for the next best makeup product. And she took a personal interest with me. This is the thing about consultants that are you know, engaging with you. If a good if a consultant is good, she's going to find out more about your lifestyle and really help to select a product that works for you personally. So we got talking and she said, you know, I see you in the beauty industry. So I went back to studying sound engineering and thought I'd get a part time job in the beauty industry. And there the engineer in me started to ask the questions, what is it about these pots of promise that bring the women back time and time again? I wanted to know the science that goes into creating these amazing products. So that's really how I entered into the industry. I found a course um, at the London College of Fashion. It was the very first university or college institution in the UK that was offering this course. There's now two institutions that, that offer the cosmetic science degree. And so I signed up, became a scientist, and yeah. That's fabulous. That's uh, fabulous. <laughs> Right, so tell us a bit about, um, you mentioned like Barry M um, and some of the uh, brands that you uh, kind of work with. Tell us about um, the Beauty and Fashion Awards. 
host keep the host keeps muting um, my microphone um so i'm having to keep on muting it um so the black beauty and fashion award so one day i was at barry m cosmetics mixing up some lip gloss and um i thought about my financial contribution to the uk economy i thought to myself hold on a moment i'm at the forefront of the industry i attend industry awards for the products that i make as well as my colleagues make. And um, I didn't see myself represented. The best products were, um, you know, marketed to Caucasian hair types and skin types. And I thought, you know, we contribute massively to the UK economy. Um, it's actually been documented that 80% of all hair products sold in the United Kingdom are, are bought by black women. Also, the Afro hair care industry is worth 5.25 billion. And I just thought, how come this revenue, this money is not coming back into our industry? And that's because most of the industry is, is dominated by other ethnic groups. So as well as creating, um, I guess, an awards. I thought to myself, I need to create an awards that looks at what are the best products available for men and women that look like me. Um, and so we launched officially at the Houses of Parliament in 2017 because oddly enough, black beauty is political. I think we're the only group of people that people will stop and ask to touch our hair, ask if it's real. You know, children are sent home for wearing afros to school. People are, are declined job roles because they may be wearing dreadlocks. So um, I thought that would be the best place to kind of launch the Black Beauty and Fashion Awards. So essentially, what the Black Beauty and Fashion Awards does is we give awards to manufacturers of products, outstanding products suitable for black and mixed heritage, people of mixed heritage across the diaspora. Um, so we've given awards to companies in the States, Canada, Dubai, the Caribbean, of course, Europe. Um, and we're just on the verge of introducing and launching the Black Beauty and Fashion Awards Africa, which is going to be looking at the offering coming out of the continent and really um, giving a nod to the innovation um, that is taking place on the continent. And of course, um, be an economic empowerment initiative. We want to support job creation. So by giving companies accolades, they're able to elevate themselves, grow their businesses, and you know, be aspirational brands. Oh, that's very, very well said, um, Cheryl. Now, I know um, that you come from a scientific perspective in the industry. So what I wanted to ask you um, in terms of like, do you find that um, on the scientific side, there is a lot of black re representation working on products that, that can um, benefit uh, actually Caribbean black skin? Do you find that there's a lot of there's, there's representation in terms of um, in terms of research and things like and development? Um, in terms of research and development, so historically, um, m most research has been carried out in the Western um, terrain, really. Um, without sounding too controversial, we have been studying over the years for other purposes like eugenics and so forth. Um, and most of the research I found has been done for in an attempt for us to look less like ourselves and more European. So there is a lack of information um, on black hair, on black skin. People believe that um, our skin is all the same. You know, it's not actually. Black skin has a different uh, structure. Um, it has different properties. Um, and so there needs to be more research um, in this area, most definitely. I think that um, when I was studying in my class, there were um, quite a few ethnic minorities in the class. I think I was one of three black people. Um, and there were a few Asian um, people, mainly female. So we need to see more people um, in, in, in the science 
of of um of black beauty but i think that for me personally it's about positioning us along the entire supply chain the development and manufacture of cosmetics is huge so you've got the research and development you've got the raw material supply then you've got the formulation side of it and that's before the product is ready for the marketplace you've got you know marketing you've got testing of the product stability testing microbiology testing um, there's an, there's a huge supply chain and i think it's important for us to educate ourselves and put ourselves in these positions of power within the supply chain of the cosmetics and the fashion industry. Don't get me talking about African textiles, you know, <laughs> it's another it's another area that we need to mobilize ourselves within. Oh, thank you very much, um, Cheryl. Um, but don't go anywhere because um, we will be having you back for our questions and answers. So thank you very much, Cheryl, for joining us. And uh, Nick, Shall we um, have a couple more comments? Let's have a yeah. little few comments from uh, the uh, groups and let's see. Yes, shall we? Um, Sitting Pretty Academy here in Beauty says, we definitely need more platforms where we can be praised and elevated to for our achievements. And I agree with that because, like I said, like I was asking um, Cheryl there, you, you very rarely see, um, you know, the people that are in the development side of things and yeah. you know we 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 are huge consumers they were known to be very huge consumers of hair and beauty probably the biggest in the world as a as a culture mm -hmm. you know but um get into the business it's lovely seeing all these business women these women that are as transcended from just being artists to being consultants and scientists and, yeah. and that's great that's great yeah. and i think another thing is is good seeing all these younger women becoming entrepreneurs um, getting into the, the the you know the beauty business, indeed. Um, you know, like Rihanna, for instance, as you said, like you yeah. know she's gone from singing and she's just taken off. Um, yeah. There's quite a few that we can mention that do that, but even some of the you know younger girls I've been seeing, um, there's a lot of um, services out there where people can start their own brands quite easily. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, get their logos on you know pretty bottles. There's so many different things now. I think social media has definitely helped it. Lolly, you hit the nail on the head there because yeah. that is exactly what I was thinking as you was talking. That's exactly, what, and you hit the nail on the head there because social media now means that these younger entrepreneurs can get their their products out there, can get you know the the exposure, can yeah. they've got access to all the different um, products that's out there on market market leaders and things like that. So they can there's there's a lot more f to happen. But I, I, as I said, I, I love to see the the especially us uh, our black women mm -hmm. on the development side they're at the the cutting edge of definitely. what we are using that's we that's what we need definitely so should we move on to um another one of our uh, ladies that's on the um mm -hmm. cutting edge sophie hello hello hi <laughs> hey sophie how are you i'm very well thank you really good, good. Thank you for joining us this evening, taking time out of your busy schedule. I have, actually. I'm on a very, very, very busy schedule. Um, I'm just launching a new shopping channel. Um, oh, are you launching a shopping channel? Sorry? Are you launching a shopping channel? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the process of launching within the couple of weeks, yeah. Okay. Hold on, can I just... Can I just... I like to hear. Can I, can I? Can I? Also <laughs> join in. Yeah, thank you. Yes, so obviously you're you're a makeup artist and you're a beauty educator with over thirty years in the business. Um, so first question that I would like to ask you, okay, in terms of um makeup, what is the the motivation for? for um, women when they're, they're doing their makeup, you, you know, in a sentence? Um, well, I think that most, it depends, because women wear makeup for many different reasons. And mm -hmm. um, I try to make women wear makeup as an enhancer and not to basically cover up their selves. It's about being comfortable in your own skin and mm -hmm. just enhancing your natural features. So I'm, where Sherry is, I'm all about natural makeup. Um, I'm all about um, basically skin comes first. 
Um, so I'm really on the skin side of it. I'm more of a um, educational where to look after your skin. And then if you're going to wear makeup and you've got really good skin as a base, you'll find that you won't need that much makeup anyway. And I do think makeup is all about confidence as well. So it, 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 it varies from women, from woman to woman. And when you speak to a lot of women, because um, you do get to find out a lot of stories about why they wear it. Is it that because they've got no self-esteem? Um, is it because they have no confidence? There's a lot of reasons why, and that's a whole other story as well. Yeah, you know so what, what would you be? Oh, sorry, Nick. Oh, no, you go. You go ahead, Lolly. So, what would you be? What would be your like top tip, like that like, about looking after your your face in terms of like skincare regime, like when you wear makeup? Well, obviously, you know, uh, skincare is always key. Um, I always say use the three step, which is looking up to your skin, cleanse, tone, moisturize. As we get older, I'm a mature woman, I won't tell you how old I am, but as we get older, obviously you've got to find products that suit your skin. So not necessarily what will work for me is going to work for another woman. And it's about knowing yourself and knowing what works for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I do find that with our younger um, ladies, they're all kind of just following the same path. And a lot of them are self-taught, um, whereas back in my day where Sherry was, because I've done stuff with Sherry in the past. So um, I worked with Sherry. I was one of the first consultants for Fashion Fair. I was also one of the first consultants for Naomi Sims. I was also one of the first consultants for Iman when Iman launched in this country. So, and I've also been an area manager a, a trainer for most of the black brands that have launched in this country and I've now gone on to work with um, women in business that have now launched in their own products including myself where that women want to develop and market their own brands their own makeup their own skincare so they come and see somebody like me I start with them from scratch from development from um, formulation to the, the packaging the bottle where it's going to sit uh, the marketing, the PR, and that's what I do. So how long would something like that take if, like, for all any of our entrepreneurs watching? How long would something take to get a product, like, for instance, a new foundation? A new foundation, you could get a new foundation probably within six months. So, again, but it all depends on the formulation because, like, um, Cherry said it's all about um, testing so sometimes when you make a product it's got to go through the testing element first and obviously because we're in well we're part of Europe you know we've got certain rules and regulations that we need to abide by and follow. Sophie just on that so on the testing front what do you think about animal testing in makeup because it's very controversial in terms of um, a lot of people are against it and a lot of people say it's necessary in order to make sure that these things are thoroughly tested to work, to, to be kind to the human skin. What, where do you stand on that? Well back, in, well, back in my time, obviously, most products were tested on animals. And then what we found is that a lot of women, once they found that out, then the brands suffered, the, the company would not make money. So obviously now women, um, so, um, you know, a lot of our women are very clued up now. So when we go into a store and we're going to buy a product, most of our ladies already know about the product. They've done their research right. and they've already, yeah, so they've already looked at the ingredients. And most brands now, and most of the big brands now, we're all using natural plant extracts. So we're not necessarily... Um, um, testing on animals like we used to that, that's not necessary anymore so we've gone into more of a natural plant based um, um, development of products so a lot of the brands now are not actually doing that anymore good stuff, good stuff and I have worked with, um, you know, because I, I work for the L'Oreal group so yes. I work with international brands, Yves Saint Laurent Christian Dior, Chanel and all of those um, brands have now moved away from testing on animals so, so tell us, tell us a bit about this shopping channel. Is it a shopping channel that you're you're actually you're going to be? Tell us a little bit about this channel. That is it around the, the beauty market. Is it in the same industry? 
Yeah, um, well, again, it's um, it's a shopping platform. Uh, mm -hmm. What we will do, we will work, we'll be working with a lot of uh, makeup brands, hair brands, um, which they're already on board. And what we do, it's a little bit like a QVC. So basically, yeah. you get a 20 minute um, slot when you come online, like what we're doing here now. Mm -hmm. And you we give the um, businesses the opportunity to demonstrate their products, talk about their brand and interact with um, a live audience while selling their products live. That sounds fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, the shopping channel, if I'm allowed to say, is called yes. mlivebusiness.com. Um, you can log Sorry, on to that again for us, Sophie. It's called um, mlive, uh -huh. mlivebusiness.com. Okay. Okay. Um, so you can log on, we're on all the social media platforms, we're on our Instagram, Facebook, and we're actually going live in the next couple of weeks. Great. Very, very, very good, and good luck with that. I hope that uh, um, it's very successful, because you know what, we need we need more platforms to sell our own stuff. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, to and, our brand and to, to help one another, actually, because yeah. if I've got products and I can demonstrate it on your channel um that's going to help you that's going to help me yeah that's right and then also yeah. what we will do we will help to push those brands on our channel as well as all our social media platforms so if you've got a product or if you know anyone that has a business and they need help and support on marketing or pr and they'd like a platform to showcase their their products makeup hair care anything along those fashion then you know, they can always get in contact with me. Good stuff. Thank you, Sophie. Don't go anywhere. Again, we'll be having you back also. All right? Thanks. Thanks, Sophie. That was good. That was good. Let's see if we Very can get good, some uh, comments from our... Um, yes. Shall we? Shall we? Well, let's, let me bring up a... Now, um, Selected Dawn G, uh, just is just saying good evening or... Good evening, um, Dawn Good night. Um, good evening, Lolly, and good evening, Tricky. Um, good evening, Dawn G. Um, I have been on the channel, and it's amazing. That's coming from Sandra Knight. Um, Vera Moore Cosmetic, just recommended before Fashion Fair. Okay. Um, well said, Sophie. Don't forget to look after our skin, which is very important. That's coming from Sandra again. Water, uh, water, water. Water? Yeah. L explain. Drink it. Oh, drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like it's magic because you know what, Lolly? Why I said that because you know you you can get this alkaline water that that mm -hmm. people spray on their skin, they spray it on their face and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, apparently, it's supposed to work wonders for clearing your pores and that. So they say. I don't know, but well, you know, um, we'll see if one of our uh, panelists will know anything about drinking that. a lot of water is very important for the human yes. being body yes. anyway. So good tip. Okay, right. so Do we get the uh, Dika in. Yes, hopefully we can hear her this time. Dika, hello, are you back with us? Yay! Dika in the house. Hi. Hi, that's better. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> much, much better. And might I say you're looking very glamorous. So you're not on. A, you're not going on a photo shoot or anything, are you? No, uh, this is just how I look every day. Really? Oh wow! Oh wow! Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> does it does it does it take a lot of time and effort to look as a wonderful as man you do? Question. Yes, it's I'm a man. I can only I can only ask men questions. <laughs> I think it depends because I know what to do with my face, so yeah, I know right. my face very well. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really take me that long. But for some people, it takes them really a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been doing my face for a very long time, so I know what I need to do. It could take me like thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's 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 pretty good because um, makeup can be take can take hours, can't it? But it's for um, you know if you if you're actually doing it from start to finish with your hair and and whatever and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can. But I think once you get used to your face mm -hmm. and you know what to use, I just use the same thing. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm doing like a different look and I want to go out there, but when I'm doing the the same thing that I do all the time, it don't take me long. I'm used to it. Yeah. So, so given that, is it is there a, the wrong type of makeup to use for for your for your complexion or your skin? Is it a, a wrong kind of like application to do as a woman? Would you say there's a wrong way of putting on makeup, or do you do you see mistakes that are are often made? I feel like the wrong way to do makeup by using your fingers. Mm 
to put on foundation. Okay. I feel like your fingers carries a lot of bacteria, mm. especially no matter how much you've washed your hands, it still carries a lot of bacteria. And for me, I feel like there's brushes, there's sponge, there's things that you can use, dispose of, wash. Why your fingers when you know that, you know, you've carried bacteria and your skin is sensitive and you end up touching your face. And by the next time you know it, you have you end up getting spots and imperfections. And you, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I don't like, I wouldn't advise anyone to use their fingers for anything. Mm. I think so you think start, what what made what inspired you to get into like makeup? Oh my god, I think I was just into myself. <laughs> <laughs> just like to look good. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you know what? Growing up, my mum used to complain about, and I was the only girl, so I was into all of that. And there was no one to do my hair, no one to do my makeup, and I just started doing it by myself. And I kept telling myself, when I'm finished, when I finish school, I'm gonna go into college. I'm gonna do beauty. And you know, I used to buy the magazines, you know, back in the days, buy the magazine, you get the free lipsticks, the free glasses <laughs> in the nineties. So I used to do all of that. And I just thought, this is what I want to do. I'm so into this. Mm -hmm. And with my family, they were so supportive. My mom always tell me that you, you like to look good. You like to look good. So when I left um, high school, I went straight into college. I did beauty, MVQ level one and two. And then I did hairdressing at the same time. So anything that had to do with looking good, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> whether it's makeup, whether it's making clothes, I was there. I wanted to do everything. Because it just it was a passion. It was just something I was into. Because you're a seamstress as well, right? Yes, yeah. I am. Wow. See my jacket. It's, I was going to say, is this one of your designs that we can yeah, see? Yeah, one of my designs, yeah. Really? I'm going to have to speak to you after the show. <laughs> do, do you make, do you make um, to, to sell to the public? I do. I don't really, I think with me, I do more for show. I like, okay. you know, mm -hmm. it depends. If you want it for the public and you like your own design, then that's fine yeah. but with me. Because I do a lot of shows and events. I do like things like this because it looks different and it stands like out. Like guard stuff. Yeah. Things like just out there. But yeah. if someone wants something more, you know, for parties and things, I, I can also do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. But for me, I like, you know, a bit like looking like this i like to stand out yes tell, tell us yeah. a little bit about house of baby d oh my god where do i start from <laughs> house of baby d has got everything in it mm. has got clothes has got hair has got makeup has... so what it is you know anything you want anything you're looking for whether it's you want a seamstress you want a makeup artist you want a hairdresser so all you do just email us and we'll be able to, you know, sort out everything. We'll be able to find you. You know, first of all, before we even give you the service that you need, we have to speak to you, get to know yeah. you and find out, you know, what's your skin like, just if you want a makeup artist, or what kind of look are you going for? And, you know, what is the makeup for? Do you know what I mean? We just get to know our customers first. And then we, we make sure we give them the service that they need. Mm -hmm. And whether we're doing clothes, we find out what look you're going for. But, you know, the House of Baby D has got everything in it. Everything. Yeah. Everything that I've done in life, that I'm qualified, that's what I've done. So I've put it all together in one website. Mm -hmm. So everyone can get any service they want. And do you have, you have specialists in different fields, do you, like, yeah. um, in each field? Yeah, we have special. So obviously I do color as well. I do mm -hmm. color and because um, I specialize in colors as well with his clothes. But also we have people that do hair yeah. that specialize. If you want, you know, the new style where they've got the lace front, everything. We have people in there that could give you that service as well. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay, Dika. So yeah. multi, multi uh, talented all under yeah. one roof. <laughs> you, have to be, you have to be multi-talented and it's important to be certified in everything you do in life so do you yeah. find do you find on like social media do you find it difficult to stand out on there amongst mm -hmm. every other uh well you see on the profiles and bios mua um it took me a little while at first to realize what it was um but yeah makeup artist did you um, um, 
does it take does it take a lot do you have to go to sort of go like that one step further to stand out no i don't because my customers know what i can give and mm -hmm you know, the service that I give them. Sometimes, no matter how much followers you have, it doesn't mean that you're a great makeup artist. It doesn't yeah. mean that it's the service that you give. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not a qualified YouTube makeup artist. I didn't learn how to do makeup in YouTube. Mm -hmm. I went to college. I did Indian bridal. I did, you know, film and photography Make I did everything. I made sure I did everything to be certified for just, you know, people don't understand that. There's, if you're not certified, you can get sued easily. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... Mm -hmm. When, I'm, when I went to college, I knew this is what I wanted to do. It's not something that I just learned it out of the blue. So for me, it's not about the like, it's about the service that I give. Even if I get two customers a week, but when I give them that service, they go to their friends and their family, and then I yeah. end up having so much. Yeah. But for me, it's not really about social. Because back in the day, it wasn't about social media, was it? Mm -hmm. It was word of mouth. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it was. So for me, I'm not really big on social media, even though I try. Mm -hmm. But I don't because I'm certified Mac makeup artist, Black Art makeup artist, Iman makeup artist. So I've done mm. all them brands. Mm -hmm. wow. So wow. I've met people along the way. I mean, yeah. When I went to Selfridges Mac, I've met a lot of people that till today I do their makeup. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not about social media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Dika. Um, we'll be coming back. Stay with, with us, Dika. We're gonna we're gonna bring you back for some questions and answers. It's very yes, very we soon. Will, we will. We and, get uh, it. once again. May I just say that uh, if people have been saying it in the in the room that you just like you look fantastic. Yes. Great outfit. Yes, yeah. and great, it's, a, great it's, great it's quite important. Like speaking to her about um like the social media and and talking mm -hmm. about being certified and that kind of thing because I think for me I was in the hair industry for what. 23 years indeed I was Lily yes, yes I was I was <laughs> and um I have to shout out to all the ginger group ladies um mm -hmm. <laughs> who knows this um yeah. and I think for me the reason why I got out was because mm -hmm. I started seeing the trend in YouTube tutorials so where people were coming to you for full services they were getting their sister or their friend to install hair extensions and come for you to just to cut it whereas before they buy you products do the whole thing but the services yeah. were cutting down so i could mm -hmm. see the change and that's where i decided to come out so it's quite changed now where social media is used as the the the, propel, the you know the where that's where people sort of like make it big through yes. social media now yes. it's, it's it's that it's that you know they don't have to do the middleman thing anymore they're just straight out there straight but, to market isn't it and straight it to their group of friends and i suppose exactly just like just like um dika was just saying it goes of recommendation it's like when you find yeah. someone who you're comfortable with you just stay there don't you i suppose yeah yeah you know yeah. should we yeah. have see marie on yes let's ha let's have our newbie on it it's, it's yeah. one of our uh, new people to the industry she goes by the name of c c me c marie hi c marie she Let's muted. Just, I think we're, you're muted. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good Hello. evening. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us this, this evening. Thank you for so, having me. <laughs> you're welcome. So how long you've been in the you used to call yourself a newbie? How long you've been in the industry, C Marie? Um well, makeup, I'm definitely a newbie. Um yes. but I've been doing hair from my mom, as you know, as you said earlier, my mom used to, um, was a hairstylist and she had her own hair salon. So I grew up being in my mom's hair salon on the weekends, and I used to help help out, and I used to I just learn um, from watching my mom, and I used to just um, play with my dolls, and mm -hmm. you know how it goes. And I used to start start doing cousins and family and friends hair, and so I've always been into hair. Yeah. Uh, so about not last year, the year before I went on a makeup course with mm -hmm. um some company called P. Louise. They are kind of a growing company in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. but I've always loved doing my makeup and stuff like that. So um I'm my generation I learned from YouTube, watching YouTube. I was just into doing my makeup and stuff like that. But so I thought let me go on a course and um see how I get on. So, so you're I one would... of these you're one of these people that Lolly was talking about then. Uh, the the YouTubers, eh? 
Kind of. I'm not really big on social media, to be fair. I'm not yeah. really. Yeah, I'm, I struggle with social media. <laughs> Just like, um, is it Dika? Like, she mm. was like, I struggle with social media myself. I'm not really big on there, but um, I do used to watch a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that. But um, I, I thought to myself, let me go out and get certified. Uh-huh. Um, mm-hmm. It was something that I thought that I felt like I could do. So um, not last year, the year before, I went on the course um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, got my, my certificate and then um, coming up to the end of the year, lockdown, kind of, so I haven't really been able to go out there and practice and get clients and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. what I did was I would get like my sister or close um, family member that was in my house and I would create little um, videos and put on my Instagram um, mm-hmm. or just videos of myself, doing my makeup and stuff like that. And that's how I've got my practice over the like the past year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just at this moment in time, it's just something that I've been doing as a hobby and that I just enjoy doing. Um what does yes. what does makeup what does makeup mean to you? Uh, would you do you feel comfortable? Um, obviously, you're, you're you're quite young, and um, yeah. I would say trendy. Um, not that you could you, you know you could be you're not old and trendy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, you're quite young and trendy. What would yeah. you say? What does it mean to you in terms of like? Do do you think it it formed part of your identity? Are you happy to go around without makeup on, or would you never leave your home without without Ninety percent of the time, I don't wear makeup. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm a. Mo- I'm a mother of two. Yeah. Um. I just. I'm. Um. Big on skincare. Ah, is this your girls? Is this your girls? Yeah. See my. Oh, they're so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So um, most of the time you will catch me without makeup. I like to. Mm-hmm. I'm big on skincare. Um, and yeah. making my skin's good. Um, but I best that it can be. So to me, when it's um, when it comes to makeup, it's time when I'm getting dressed to go out somewhere, or yeah. if there's a day where I just want to feel glammed up, I just um, I definitely see it as an enhancer rather than something that's going to make me look completely different to how I actually look. Because that's something that I don't feel genuine. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. It's just I find it it's fun. It's fun. It's a part outfit it's yeah that's, yeah it's not that serious <laughs> it's nothing better than having your face yeah. Beat. yeah i know some of the language you're having your but face beat. I, just don't, I just want to go out with my fresh skin glowing and yeah and just yeah and you you, you know it's funny though see Marie, because a lot of a lot of men when it comes to makeup a lot of men we um we we love when a woman looks well turned out talking from a men's but you know looks glammed up and whatever which is not reality you, like you said you're a mum yeah. of two so that's that's like second that's like a secondary importance to you in terms of like you know how you organize your day but as for us men we love to see women all made up or whatever we then you have the men that say oh yeah she's all made up but i like natural women and whatever and then i like this nice. and i like that so no, we, yeah. we, we're very conflicted as men very conflicted so as a woman do what you want to do that's yes. it. If a man wants you, he will have you, he will pursue you. But as a woman, do what you want to do, do what you feel comfortable in. I don't, my mum taught me to always be yourself and do what you want to do. Exactly. Because How you what, well what, what you would you find is that men men are uh, attracted to the look, but it's the, it's the personality and the character yeah. that is going to keep that, yeah, that relationship, you know, oh, right? Looks fade. Yes. Yeah. So, you know what I mean, yeah. your heart always says the same. So keep it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so do you, you? I mean, obviously, you've been in. It's been in. You've been in lockdown and and stuff over the last yeah. year. So you haven't been able to think. But how are you finding it getting better now in terms of being able to do some work and stuff, doing a little now, bit more? I, um, as um, I've just finishing up my qualification. Um, doing hair. So I'm okay. a qualified hairstylist now. Um, mm-hmm. I also learned how to do nails last year during lockdown. Um, I just love to do things for myself. So, I've, um, mm-hmm. 
just as it was just said previously, it is very important to be certified. So as once I start learning things and I feel like this is something that I may be able to pursue as a part of my career, I just go out and look for a course that I can take. And um, so at the moment now, I'm a qualified hairstylist, makeup artist and a nail technician. So um, so all you need to do is lashes now to, for the full set. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that I don't think I'd actually get into. Yeah. Four yeah. minutes, mm -hmm. okay. so this show has been very um eye-opening for me it's very inspirational mm -hmm. listening to a lot of the, the ladies talking Absolutely. Yeah. so um yeah it's giving it's giving me a lot to run with good and on that note see Marie, should we bring the, the rest of the ladies in yes yeah, yes. yeah let's have Absolutely. some let's share some knowledge Indeed. for the next few minutes Welcome back, Deepa. Welcome back, Sherry Ann. Welcome back, Sophie. Right, I I have a I have a question for you all. Once you, once you're all in the room, actually, I have a question for you all, ladies. Is it is it acceptable for men to be wearing makeup? Why not? Why not? I think they do. Why not? I feel like men have the question. question too. Why not? I should always make up. The little bit of makeup. Yeah, but I, I, I suppose they, it's um, when you're on stage, I suppose that when you're on stage, it's it's a, a different thing. They they want to look their, their best on stage and that, but uh, as an everyday. Do you think that it's, it's okay for a man to wake up in the morning and put on makeup and go out on the street every day with makeup on? If you're comfortable within yourself, yeah. If you're comfortable, why not? Not makeup as the way I'm wearing makeup. I'm makeup mm -hmm. in like, makeup you've got, in like, you know, hide something underneath the eyes or something like that. Not makeup as in like eyelashes and eyebrows, not like that. <laughs> But working in this industry, men wear makeup anyway. We've seen I was it. Say foundations and that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's up to you. It's, it's your preference. We can't say nothing. It's the world, isn't it? Do you, Do you find a lot of men coming to you for um, makeup tips? Drag. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's where the you know, with like the contour and the highlight. That's where it's come from. Is drag. Mm. Uh, contouring yeah the highlighting and the chisels and that's where a lot of it's come from is drag uh -huh. and nick nick with regard to that question um yes. there are men who are using um foundation makeup it's light it's in the shops i mean when i worked uh as an, a makeup artist years and years ago there were many men that were and they weren't gay but wanted mm -hmm. Not that anything's wrong with gay people, but I'm just no, saying no, not at all, no. that um, they were and they wanted to look a bit better, or less blemished, or they use powder, um, bronzing powder, you know, a light bronzing powder. And I used to show them how to do it. Many yeah. actors use makeup, and yeah. many black actors. Many black actors use makeup. Yeah, and I can understand yeah, that, Sherry. Right? The reason that, why I put that question, question to all of you as a as a group is because. Um, you know how would you how how would you feel about your partner getting up and you see him putting on his makeup in the morning and things like that? You know, I don't mind <laughs> because... tinted moisturizer. What's wrong with that? Oh, I mean, I moisturize. I moisturize. I like to smell good. I like to look good. I like to be well kept. But I I will stop at putting foundation or concealer or powder or anything like that on my. What face. about I... what about a tinted moisturizer? We've been in the house for like over a year now, Nick. Yeah. Some of us are getting a little bit pale and ashy. Yeah. Uh, that's naturally <laughs> me. I'm pale and ashy. I'm not saying you are, but I'm no, just I'm naturally something anyway. like that. Like, you know, it gives you a little glow, a little bit of something. No. Take him to the no, I, I don't I don't think I don't I don't think um uh, just it's just my, my opinion. I, I think a well groomed man is a well groomed man. I I stop at the foundation and the concealer and things like that. I don't I don't really go with it. But Nick, okay. uh, you know uh, all these album covers. I mean, yeah. I did yeah. Mary White and 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 Lufa Vandross and Lufa and that, yeah. But listen, we made them look like that. They didn't look like that. Somebody has to make them. Look like that. 
<laughs> I can understand that. I can understand from an artist's point of view that they want to, when they're going for a, a photo shoot or they're, they're doing their, their, um, they were appearing on TV. I can I, I can understand that, yeah. but um, just not like for the everyday man. I don't. Everyday man, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on, Lolly. Let's right, move on, Lolly. Do we have, um, a, have question? a question? I think we've got some I feedback got some from uh, Cheryl here. Um, so if we ask everybody a question. And then that should uh, wrap us up. So, or actually, can we get some of the comments from, um, and then we can put a, a question Indeed. to each of our panelists today. Indeed. Let's get some of these questions. Okay. Um, can get them on the screen. Uh, yeah, I've I've actually got a question. This this one is from Sharon, um, and Sharon is asking, um, do you do you find that it's more competitive now that the social media aspect has taken on that? It's harder to get clients and keep them. That's coming from Sharon. That, should we put that to Sophie, that question? Yeah. Sorry, what was that question? It's, it's saying, do you find that the, the industry is more competitive now, so it's harder to get clients and keep them because of social media and the, uh, the advent of the competitiveness of social media? Uh, me personally, no, I don't, because I find that um, if you are skilled, for me, because I'm skilled at what I do and people know what I do, they, they it's about building trust in, in your customer and your client. So I don't find that any brand or anything out there is competition for me. What I do, I, I find different ways to reach out to different clients, different people. And with my skill, once they can see what it is that you're doing, they'll always keep coming back to you. And not only will they keep coming back, but they'll also be telling other people about you. So I, I get it that, the beauty industry is very, very competitive. But I feel that if you know your skill, you know yourself, you be you, you don't have to worry about any of that at all. You, there's always room for you to be able to do what you want in the industry. It's a very, very big industry. And with beauty, it covers lots of different layers. So there's all different layers to beauty. And there's all different layers to makeup in the way that there is for bridal makeup, for photo shoots. So there's different makeup artists for different things. So not all makeup artists can actually do a, hot, um, a rounded um, industry in terms of makeup. We've got makeup artists that are good for photo shoots. We've got makeup artists that are good for um, just doing natural makeup. And that's why it goes back to what I was saying before. So a lot of our younger um, makeup artists, they're all self-taught. So if they are now going to be doing makeup on a mature lady, that's where a lot of them become stuck. So what I would then advise them to do and teach them to do is teach them different ways and different um, different layers of how to do makeup because I find that a lot of us now are only doing makeup one way when there's several ways of doing makeup. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Sophie, for that. Thanks, Sophie. Um, we had a question from Cassandra Charles. She says, I thought beauty was from within. Who would like to go with that one? Dika. Oh, hold on. You know what? We'll have both of you ladies. We've got like three minutes left of the show. So let's try and keep it as brief as you can. All right? <laughs> yeah, Dika. Um, yeah, Dika. Um, yeah, I do believe beauty yeah, is in, but beauty. at the same time, at the same time yeah. you know, sometime in life, yes, I love myself. I do love myself at makeup, but sometimes I like to switch but sometimes you just want to look different for that day or mm -hmm, for that yeah. week or for that month or something. Even men go and cut their hair, grow a beard, but they are beautiful, but we just go with the time as well, where mm -hmm. sometimes you just need to switch yourself and just make yourself look different. The, you know, makeup is not meant to change you. It doesn't change who you are. It doesn't, shouldn't change your look. It just mm -hmm. enhances how you really look anyways. Thank mm -hmm. you, Dika. Thank you very much. Sherry Ann. Oh, we got Sherry Ann. We got Sherry Ann. I know you want to. I know you want to. Okay, I'll do. A, oh, okay, I'll do oh, a, sentence. a sentence. meaning makeup. Makeup is an enhancement, and she is right. Uh, you makeup it is within. Should be starting from your inner power, your your soul, and then and then obviously we have to take the right vitamins. 
had to keep our skin, you know, not sagging and, you know, whatever. And we, then, then after that, then you can use anything else for enhancement. There's nothing wrong with putting on a lipstick or a lip gloss, you know, or Vaseline. Who cares? <laughs> put it on. Put it on to make yourself glow. Glow, glow, glow. Thank you, Sherry Ann. And Cheryl. Oh. Hiya. Okay. So, um, Cassandra made a very good point. Beauty does start within. So, the quality of the hair that you grow our head, head depends on your diet and what you eat. Um, as much as I make products in the laboratory, it's well documented that water and a healthy diet is actually going to make you more beautiful and give you a better quality of life, better quality of looking skin, brighter eyes. So your beauty products are there for hygiene, to protect and to adorn yourself. I don't think we should feel pressurized to have to conform to ideals of beauty. And so for me, it's all about skincare first because your makeup tends to look as good as your skin does, unless you're wearing camouflage makeup. Um, but yes, beauty, beauty is and should be a choice. Okay, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got a last question that I want to ask, and it's just a one-word answer: a yes or no. So Sonia wants to know: Does makeup damage your skin? Yes or no? Um, can we go through, through yeah. one panel from one panel yeah. to the other? One panel to the other. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yes or no, Cheryl? Yes or no, Cheryl? Um, makeup does not damage your skin. Okay. Dika? I believe if, if, if you wear a lot of it, yeah, it can damage your skin. Okay. Makeup can damage your skin. If you okay. put it on, you sleep with it, it can. That's what she was talking about, skincare. Take care of your skin before you can pour all that makeup on because it does go into your skin. Into your Thank skin. you, Dika. Okay. See, Marie? Yeah, it's how you use it. How you need to learn how to skin okay. care. Oh, that's been Brilliant. amazing today. Ladies, Sophie, thank you so Sophie. much. Oh, do we got yes, Sophie? Yes. Sophie, Sophie, does it damage your skin? Can it damage your skin? Makeup can damage your skin, and that's why it's very important that you focus on your skincare. And if you've got beautiful skin, then you'll end up wearing less makeup. The makeup will just be an enhancer of your own skin. Okay. Thank you very much, Sophie. And and last, last of all, last of all, Sherry Ann. No, you're muted. This makeup yep. doesn't damage your skin. Your your skincare routine that damages your skin. If you okay. wash, cleanse, and moisturize, if you cleanse, tone, and moisturize every day, then why should makeup damage your skin? It's your routine. Okay. Thank, thank you very, you very much, much. Marianne. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. It's been an eye opener. Thank you very much for joining <laughs> us. Eye opener or eyeliner? Eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for sharing for sharing your knowledge and your and your experience. It's been really, really good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the panel. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. That's all we've got time for today. Indeed. Uh, so we say thank you to Sherry Ann, C. Marie, Sophie. Uh, Deacon, also Cheryl for joining us uh, this week. Uh, Nick, yes, that, that's the end of another show. That is the end of another show, Lolly. This that one went fast, man. I, I had so many more things that I wanted to ask, but I was afraid to. You're just getting warmed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Okay. So until uh, what two weeks time, uh, we will be back. Make sure if you're not already, please do press the subscribe button. Make sure you are subscribed and do feel like you can check out the uh, previous videos that we have done. The podcast. Yeah. Uh, so what is? Uh, you can also follow on Facebook. Uh, we can have all the links. There we go. All the links are going across the Just screen. The yes, make sure you do there, yeah. follow, subscribe, like, and share. Thank you all. That for, thank you all of, of those of you that um, were in the chat room as well today. That actually uh, contributed and sent your messages. We couldn't get all through all of them, obviously, as you can see. We got an hour, and it it goes very quickly. But we appreciate you you staying with us. Please do, yeah. as Lolly said, share, like and subscribe to, to the channel. We appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Until next time. Cheerio. It's been what is. Bye-bye.